อา้าวครับทศบกวัตุรหัตุสัมมาสัมบุตสะนโมทัสสะปกวัตุรหัตุสัมมาสัมปุตัสสะนโมทัสสะปกวัตุรหัตุสัมมาสัมปุตัสสะจาริยังนามามิสุขเค So it's been interesting sitting here, picking up the uh, the aramana, the mood of the occasion. And uh, I think one thing that r u m p o l i a m said: it doesn't matter. We don't need to translate these because a lot of these talks is not just information that you're gathering, but you're gathering a sense of the feeling, the atmosphere, the mood. So just noticing this. Uh, Yeah, this tremendous ebullience and vigor and uh, good humor in the uh, Dhamma talks tonight, and I can't really emulate that. <laughs> so, <laughs> but uh, this is the thing that you pick up, and this is why it is an international occasion because the the citta has no nationality, has no language. The citta is affected by atmospheres, mood, friendship. Courage, uh, patience, and uh, virtues that we cultivate just by gathering together and living in this attitude of reverence and uh, aspiration and commitment. So, for the people who are rather new here, not so familiar uh, with this kind of occasion, I think you notice uh, many striking features that are both a tribute to l u m p o c h a And also an act of acknowledgement of the of the people, the culture that he arose from, and this amazing sense of reverence that is not solemn and stiff. It's respectful, but it's also it's not frozen and cold. It's respectful. It's very warm and joyful, and uh, the respect is gracious, and there's a lot of good humour in it. Yeah, and there's a tremendous generosity. Uh, both you see the manifest generosity of offerings of food and and um, requisites, but also the generosity to allow so many people to come into the monastery uh, and just camp. Would you do that in your house? <laughs> you know, so many people you don't know just to come in, use the place. And uh, yeah, there's tremendous generosity from the l u m p o l i a m and the Wat Pa Pong Sangha to welcome us all here, to invite us all here, and to uh, uh, create an occasion where we can get the sense of samagi, of harmony, um, of communality, of common goal, which is the real essence of what the occasion is about. So when we go away. We take some of that with us. We take some of the sense of yes, I belong to the community. I belong to the practice. I belong to the values and the qualities that Lumpur Cha manifested and taught. And you take that with you, and that's what you came for, you know. <laughs> and that's why you're welcomed in to receive this gift. You know. You know? So clearly, also being an international occasion, an occasion is deliberately international and generously so. You know, to people like me who barely understand what's being said, uh, welcomed in, and uh, the idea is: yeah, the more the more differences that we can accommodate, uh, the better. You know, that the more fun it is, the more interesting it is, the more rich it is, the more differences we can accommodate. 
So rather than some exclusive sect of just the really pure ultimate people, just the more we can accommodate, the more differences, the more young people, the more old people, the more disabled people, the more we can gather in, the better it is. And that's also a tremendous uh, sign of encouragement. Uh, that is a sign of both the culture of this uh, occasion and also of Lumpu Cha, yeah, who took on a huge amount of very mixed people. <laughs> and that's being polite about it. <laughs> I mean, very strange people. Uh, certainly some of the people I know are quite... Uh, you know, neurotic or <laughs> disturbed, damaged, taking them on and welcoming them in and treating them and trying to relate to them to give them Dhamma. Yeah. This is a tremendous uh, generosity of heart and a confidence that beneath all the differences, all the strangeness, all the moods, all the tempers, all the whatever, there is a purity a chitta there trying to wake up, trying to get out of this craziness <laughs> of defilement and confusion. Mm. Yeah. So I spent about, I only really had about a month or so living in the company of Ajahn Chah. Uh, and it, that's not much, but it was enough to pick up the mood, uh, the flavor, the quality that was being manifested. Yeah. I mean, the first striking thing I noticed about Lumpur Cha when he arrived in Britain was, this is strange, this man who doesn't speak the language, it's not his country, he's more at home here than I am. <laughs> you know, he's actually, he looks like he's more comfortable being in England than I am, and I'm English. He's not making a problem out of things that I make a problem about. He's more settled and comfortable than I am. And it wasn't because he knew the language or the people or he'd studied it or he'd learned about it. He knew the defilements of the heart and he'd eliminated them. <laughs> yeah. So there's a lot of space, a lot of safety, a lot of security, a lot of confidence and trust that all you needed in any country in any place, in any situation, was good heart, barami, bun barami, and uh, tremendous confidence in that. And that's something that we can all cultivate. Yeah. So he, he exuded confidence, happiness that wasn't excited, just a comfortable, at ease quality. And he also radiated a kind of strength. This man was like a mountain. And it was very striking because he came, when he came to Britain, he had Ajahn Samedo, who's big, and Ajahn Babakro, who was perhaps even bigger. And they were both towering over him physically. You know, they were both over six foot. Lumpur Chao was about five, four, five, five and they look small. <laughs> he, you know, they were physically bigger and they looked small. And he looked big. And this man was a mountain. Uh, and wherever he sat, the mountain stopped and people started to gather around. Yeah. And this is, this is the strength. And there's a certain, to me, there's, this was the constancy, the continuing quality there and that constant continual quality, confidence, strength, generosity of spirit, spaciousness and tremendous uh, uh, interest in presenting Dhamma. Those were the constant. With that not changing, everything else could adapt. So the fact that he could reach so many people in so many countries was because of two qualities. Don't change, adapt. <laughs> and they seem to be contradictory. Yeah. 
but don't change in terms of the barami, the values, adapt in terms of the local custom, language, situation. That can all change. And don't change, don't change and also adapt. So when he first landed in Britain, for example, a very simple example, as you see here, there's quite a clear sense of, um, you know, the differentiation, the men sit here, the women sit there, there's a lot of, you know, boundaries there. That isn't the case in Britain. It's everybody's just mixed together. And he, when he came to Heathrow Airport, he came to the airport and there was the airport bus. And you've been on these airport buses, they're just full of people. Men, women, everybody mixed up. Nobody knows what a monk is. Nobody's giving him space. You walk here, everybody back gives the monk space. They don't give monk space in Britain. Monk is just another body. And so he saw this bus, men, women, he looked at it once, twice, straight on. (laughs) Just get in. (laughs) He didn't expect people to back off and give him space. He could just go right in. And we lived in a house in uh, central London, in Hampstead, very different from Ubon, obviously. And it was a small house. So, you know, the people would sit very close to him. Men, women sit very close to him. And he was just completely calm with that. There was no sense of him feeling tense or resisting anything. Yeah. And so he could adapt. He could adapt to the food. And, you know, if when you come here as a Westerner, you, sometimes you find the food a bit challenging. You know, it's like, do you eat the food or does it eat you? <laughs> it's quite pungent, it's quite strong, it's quite uh, sharp, it's quite fierce. And, you know, you've, sometimes your mouth water, your eyes water, and that, that's the standard. Well, you know, for a monk from the East, aren't, English food is like eating newspaper. <laughs> It's like, it doesn't taste of anything because there's no chili and there's no pladek and there's no... <laughs> and then you just eat that, no problem, you know. Naturally, of course, it's a lot colder in England, although he came, generally, he came in May and June. It's still not as, not as warm as this. Um, didn't seem to affect him. And Lumpur Jan, who came a year late, who came a few years later, stayed the whole through the winter time. Just cold is cold, you know. This sense of uh, uh, a tudong, tudong monk. And one thing that uh, perhaps I just like to highlight, um, because we hear about Lumpur Char as a, a teacher and as a founder and uh, so forth, but Lumpur Char was also a Tudong monk, Tudong monk from beginning to end. Yeah. Tudong is, uh, Tutanga means your practice is constantly aimed at shaking off defilement. It's not just meditation by no means. It's you put yourself in situations where you have to meet feeling, Vedana and Sanya, perception, and sankara activities and you stay resolute yeah you don't give in to feeling you don't give in to to uh, perceptions imaginations impressions you don't give in to energies you stay resolute and this clears the agitation the craving the restlessness the resistances that most of us experience when pain comes yeah we wriggle we squirm we don't want it. We don't like it. And the practice of Tudong is to live in such a way that you, you put aside the defenses that normal people create. Their safe houses, their comfort, their warmth. Yeah? And you, you put that aside. You go down to basic earth level. Yeah? And Lumpur Chah spent about eight years uh, wandering Tudong. And you wander too long, it's uncomfortable. It cannot be comfortable. Because 
You can't carry what you need to make you comfortable. You have a bowl and a glot, and it means it's hard earth. It means it's hot and it's wet and it's cold and you don't, don't get washed and you get hungry and your feet hurt and you get sick. Uh, and he did that for eight years. And in that, cultivated this tremendous resolution you know, to meet fear, uh, pain, aversion, sickness, and stay resolute. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, yeah, you know, even as a lot. You know, we can think of it as an idea, but as a practice, it really gets you, you know, when the pain comes and, you know, you can't wriggle anymore. Uh, yeah. And you just have to feel your body shaking, trembling, when the cold comes and you've got nothing, nothing warm, you just have the body just shakes and trembles and you stay within it just staying resolute while the body shakes, trembles, gets sick and you stay, stay resolute. And that's the Dutanga. And that creates a tremendous uh, uh, strength and confidence that you're not, you know, because you gain confidence over these, what are called the aggregates, the kanda, which tend to jump at the chitta and try and knock it around. And it's pleasant feeling tries to grab the chitta, pull it in. Painful feeling tries to punch the chitta and knock it out. <laughs> you know, and you just stay like a boxer you know, ducking, you know, in your mind. You keep your mind agile and not giving in to complaining or grabbing or whining or struggling or, you know. Yeah, and that, that's, that seemed to be, help so much to establish a sense of constancy. And the understanding of the Tudong practitioner is these are going to come anyway, you know. A normal person spends... 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years running away and then it gets you. The pain gets you. <laughs> you know, the confusion gets you. Why don't I meet it now and learn to deal with it? Because it's going to come anyway towards the end. And this way I can learn to free my heart from the grip of the aggregates. Yeah. Yeah. So you look at perceptions, feeling lonely, feeling people don't like me, feeling lost, feeling confused, feeling like I can't manage this, feeling I'm hopeless. You know, these are perceptions, sanya, and you meet that and you stay resolute. Sankara, I'm panicking, I'm agitated, I'm desperate. You feel those feelings, you experience that and you stay resolute. This is just that, this is just that, this is just that. Yeah. This is a dudong. And although Lumpur Cha, you know, after I think eight years, and I may be incorrect, but something like that, you know, out of compassion, decided to put Grot to stay here, which was just, first of all, under a mango tree in the, in the grounds. No, no kuti, just a tree with a grot, and uh, living on very simple food because the villagers didn't have much food. And to make their way to this place also was a struggle because it was a... Not an easy way, it was a dangerous forest, so they, sometimes they'd only get a little bit of sticky rice or some chili and staying here. And then the Tudong continued, but it changed in some ways from being phys just physical austerity, which always remained the case, to being the challenge of meeting people, responsibilities, you know, uh, situations that cause one to you know, feel overwhelmed or confused or something. And so that's, you know, Tudong gets, stays there, that same principle. Don't blink, don't get lost in it. Don't get dazzled by fame. Don't get attracted by praise. Don't get sucked into renown or honor or being a Chao Kun or something. You know, don't buy into it. The pleasure, the attraction. Don't fear people disliking you. Uh, you know, don't fear the criticisms uh, of people who are confused. And so remaining resolute. Change. Don't change. Adapt. 
Don't change, adapt. <laughs> and you adapt in order to accommodate. Because the quality of what arises from true practice as the kilesa, as the defilements decrease, as the jitta becomes clearer, there is a sense of space, freedom. Yeah. That is all that really uh, we had to deal with was these kilesa, defilements, the agitations, the confusions, the attachments that limited our freedom. When they drop or get cleared away, the space, the freedom opens up. Yeah? And in that freedom, other people find shelter. Yeah? It's like you have a plant and you get the root goes into the ground and it's strong, it has a strong trunk. It unfolds its leaves and you can take shelter. And Lumpo Cha was like a tree in that way. Very deep root, very strong trunk and a big canopy and lots of people could take shelter in that. And that shelter was his freedom yeah. and his, his resolution remained and as the practices continually tested it and it kept eliminating the occurrence of the kalesa, the freedom and the space increased to the point we have something like this. Yeah. The number of people you can include yeah, because there's the space. And you've established the values then that these uh, Kruba Ajans and the great elders of Wat Bapong continue to uh, bring forth using the same understanding and the same spirit to keep the potential for freedom available. And then we can all shelter under it. We can all take refuge in it. As you can see, you know. So you see this with your eyes. You look around. How come? Is it possible that we all have the same ideas? No. Is it possible we all have the same preferences and tastes? No. Mm. But is it possible that there's a chitta, an awareness, a mind, a heart, that, has, that we have in common? Yes, this is possible. And for the sake of this, it's pre one is prepared to sacrifice a lot. This is the Tudong spirit. Siya uh, sala. Siya sala, sacrifice, give up. Yeah. So as we practice together and uh, cultivate, look at every, every day, bring this thought to mind. Change, don't change, just adapt. Don't change, adapt. Bring to mind every day, yeah? that every day. Don't change, just adapt. Don't change, just adapt. What is it that doesn't change? <laughs> Yeah? And the rest of it, let it, let it adapt. Yeah? Bring to mind, is there something that I can strengthen just a little more, be a little more resolute? Is there something I can let go of to fir make things firmer and simpler in my life? Is there something I'm carrying that I don't need to carry? Is there something I'm expecting I don't need to expect? Is there something I can let go of that I don't need? Keep that in mind. Yeah. That's the two dong. Is there something I can finish with? Because you're going to finish with it one day. If you finish it with awake, awake awareness, there's the possibility of the second, which is, is there something I can include? Is there something more I can include? Is there something more I can... To, you know, shelter. This is the compassion of the, of the great uh, practitioner. Is there someone else, something else I can accommodate and find room for in my heart? And when these two come together and are manifested and practiced, then these are the results you get. You get something that's got its roots in the Isan and its leaves and its branches spread over to America and Australia. That's a very big tree. <laughs> so.
So I will uh, stop my talk now so that you have a chance to continue your practice and thank you for bearing with it. I uh, hope something useful. Here Wang. Sato Bao Ti Thap Ah, Triam Tua Bao Ti Thap Krab Thanh Va Krab Sam Krang Kho Anamo Chana Kho Bun Kho Prakun Long Pho ให้หลวงพ่อมีสุขภาพเท่านายแข็งแรงนะครับเป็นร่มโพร่มใสของญาติโยมชาวพุทธชาวชาวประเทศอังกฤษ